I'm saying that, you know. Oh I, oh, I know, but my study is like this. I mean, that's why I usually when I invite people to come to the study. But secular, then on secular, in the secular world, they always do that, man. They always, you always got to have a contract, bro, because, you know, if something happens, you know, but there's nothing's going to happen here, you know. Well, you know, like, you know, like I tell the guy, you know, when I talk to people and I tell them about the ministry, I tell them, listen to it. And if, if it's something you want to be a part of, then yeah. let me send you the link and, and you can, you can, you know, be a part of the ministry. Um, but one thing, too, is that, you know, anything you share. Yeah. You know, like your testimony or, or you know, or what you learn or what you what you already have learned. Yeah. I mean, it, it helps somebody else out, you know, help yeah. somebody yeah well that's what i used to, yeah that's what i used to tell people about your uh testimony you know it, it's gonna help somebody you know around around that meeting or, or something you know mm -hmm. it, all testimonies are like that you know it's like people that you can get but i can't get to you know put it that way you know or there's mm -hmm. people that i can get to and you can't get to you know so that's the way it works you know mm -hmm. It, the the word like it says it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't fall the seed doesn't you know just it it'll grow no matter what you know it doesn't the what is the Bible it says man it's been a while <laughs> yeah, it doesn't come back void <laughs> yeah that's what it is man. it doesn't come back void man so what is it it was called called to called to go forth yeah. I mean, you know, First Corinthians three six says, "I planted, Apollos watered, you know, but God gave the increase." Exactly. So, yes. It's either he who so, who planted, nor he who watered it, but it was God who gave that whole increase. You know, uh -huh. everything. God, everything happens through God. <clears throat> you know, nothing happens out of coincidence. Como dice Adolfo, right, Adolfo? <laughs> That's right. No coincidence at all. <laughs> everything has a purpose. Everything yeah. has a <laughs> smallest little details, right? <laughs> that's what I believe. Yeah, man, and that's what the Bible teaches, right? <laughs> no, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll wait for. We'll, we'll see if Lalo gets back. So Lalo can do the introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll introduce the ministry, and then uh, Adolfo, you can pray us in. Okay. And then we'll we'll. See if uh, Lalo comes back. So I'm going to introduce the ministry. So I want to welcome each and every one of you who are who've been following us in the Book of Psalms. <clears throat> tonight we're going to be in Psalm 62. Um, the title of tonight's message is "A Silent Trust on the Most High." Trusting this silence to be my anchor. And I'll give you a little bit more insight into what my introduction is about. But uh, Psalm 62 is a silent trust on the Most High. Um, so that the the, um, the scripture for the Tabernacle of meeting, out from above, is Revelation 21:3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, "Behold, the Tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them; they shall be His people." And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 3, once again, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. The tabernacle that Moses was told to set up while wandering in the wilderness where it represented the dwelling place of God on this earth. But this tabernacle of God is the reality of his presence. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. The essence of God's desire and man's purpose. God's desire is to live in close fellowship with man. And man's purpose is to be a people unto God. And then the next scripture we have is for the tabernacle is uh, Psalm 51, 10 through 12. It's a psalm of David, a psalm of repentance. Here we see David, God's chosen king, sin by having relations with another man's wife, Bathsheba. 
But God has something to say about David's abuse and power, right? Because he was a king, and he sends his prophet Nathan to call David out. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, Nathan uses a story to illustrate the seriousness of David's sin, and it's effective in calling David to repentance. There are still repercussions from his sin, but because Nathan spoke the truth, David repented and avoided bringing further punishment on Israel. Right? And so he wrote Psalm 51. This created me in heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with the willing spirit. Right? After the sin with Bathsheba, he says, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Lord, give that back to me and sustain me with the willing spirit, right? <clears throat> May the Lord sustain you. May the Lord sustain me throughout that week with that what? With that willing spirit, right? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? It's weak. But the flesh is weak. Uh, next we have is, is uh, Acts chapter 16. We have the, uh, the story of the Philippian jailer, right? A Philippian jailer was tied up to Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. We're preaching Jesus in the calle, in the street. <clears throat> and in, being with the Philippian jailer, chained up to him, God sent an angel and shook up the prison. The chains were broken. These men were set free, right? The Philippian jailer cried out to Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16, verse 30, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Right? And they responded in verse 31. And they... and and they said, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Man, just believe, and you will be saved, you and your household. Is any among you afflicted due to alcohol, due to depression, to anger, drug abuse, death of a loved one, mixed marriages, abandonment? Know that God loves you, and it waits for you to respond. And to respond to the call, right? God says, hey, I have a calling in your life. Right? Experiencing God's call may be a process. But answering his call requires a definite decision. Right? A delayed obedience is disobedience. Right? But how do I know what my spiritual calling is? Right? Well, you know what you, you know. You know it by what comes naturally to you and by what God blesses. Amen. How do I know what my spiritual calling is? Well, you know it by what comes naturally to you and by what God blesses. Amen. That's the tabernacle meeting, help from above. Uh, that's who we are, and that's what we're about. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to forward with uh, Hermano Adolfo. He's going to do us a favor and praise him. Our hearts, dear Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you thanks and praises for your loving kindness and for your mercies. And we just thank you, and we praise you, we worship you, and we adore you, Lord. We lift up our lives before you. We ask you, Lord, that you will use us as instruments in your hands tonight for the message that you are sending out there tonight uh, by the mouth and uh, the guidance of uh, Pastor Junior. Anoint him, bless him, speak through him, and speak through all of us. There is any necessity out there tonight that you want someone to hear the testimony of one of us or anything that you want to speak. Be free to speak, Lord. We are instruments in your hands. Uh, for those of them that are suffering, I pray that you will bring comfort. For those that are hungry, I pray that you will bring food and shelter. I pray, Father, that you will bring salvation to the ones that do not know you. And in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, and I praise you for this ministry. And I just thank you for what you are doing tonight and what you will do throughout the night and in the days to come. And remember those that are uh, traveling and giving traveling mercies. And for uh, the ones that are not here tonight, bless them, and I pray that everybody in our homes are, everybody is doing well, that everybody is doing uh, your will and that your purposes might be done 
according to your perfect will. I ask this thing not by might, and not by power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, hermanos, gracias. Uh, hermano Lalo? Yeah. Can you do the introduction, brother? Uh, sure. Let me see. <clears throat> Men of God, we're moving forward in the book of Psalms and moving forward to our next chapter, in which is chapter 62. For tonight, and the title of the message is A Silent Trust on the Most High, Trusting This Silence to Be My Anchor. The Hebrew scholars titled it to the chief musician, to Jedison. A Psalm of David. Jedithon was one of David's singers and music leaders. Psalm 62 arises out of the psalmist professing confidence in God and encourages the believer to wait silently and to trust on a sovereign God. Take note on verse 1 that reads, Truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation, a confident trust in God's protection from his enemies. Take note on verse three, how long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a, a, and a tottering fence. In other words, how much longer will you try to press me down? How much longer will you try to destroy me? Verse 4, they only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in, in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Lies are being said about David in public. Note the envy, the hatred, and the jealousy. These are the reasons why they are trying to bring him down. But David, having the spirit of discernment, takes a pause to reflect on God's promises. It's important to know his word, his promises, and to believe in them. What we learn from here, from David's response, is to be silent and allow God to move on our behalf. Verse 5, my soul, wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. Verse 6, he only is my rock, my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Note here that it doesn't say my hope It is in him. No, it says, my hope is from him. Yes, even hope is a gift from God. Amen. It is God being our rock, our salvation, fortress, and deliverance. Lord, you are our rock, our fortress, and hope, our life. Teach us, Lord, where we fall short and inspire us to do our best to rise up and move forward. Father, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. See you guys Amen. today. That was good. That, it doesn't map out the whole psalm, but it does tell us that, you know, that, uh, that the psalmist prays uh, against his enemies here by saying, hey, you know, like I wrote the introduction, how long? Like verse three, right? <clears throat> three and four. It says, take note on verse three, like Lalo, Hermano Lalo just read. It says, take note on verse three. How long will you attack a man? <clears throat> you should explain. Right? How long will you try to press me down? How long, how much longer will you try to destroy me? Right? Verse four. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in, they delight in lies. <clears throat> you know, so 
His enemies are speaking lies. And they're trying to bring down his, his character, his integrity. You know, it reminded me of Job. <laughs> you know, Job, uh, you know, Job 31, right? We, we, when, we went through the, we through, when we went through the book of Job, uh, Job chapter 31, we titled it um, Living a Life of Integrity. <clears throat> right? Because, I mean, if right here, what the enemies are lying about David, you know, like I wrote the introduction. These, these are these are the reasons why they're trying to bring him down, right? <clears throat> but they curse inwardly. Lies are being said about David in public. Note the envy, the hatred, the jealousy. These are reasons why they are trying to bring him down. You know, they're trying to bring him down because they're trying to destroy his character. If the enemy can to destroy your character, then you know you won't have. How do you say it? Uh, your ministry. You know that's what the enemy's trying to do. The enemy's trying to destroy his ministry. If the, if, the, if, if the enemy can destroy your character, you won't be as effective in ministry. <clears throat> you know, and that's why David here he pauses. Right, he pauses, thinks about it. I mean, that's why it says right here that uh, he waits. In verse 1, right? <clears throat> it says, truly my soul silently waits for God. In verse 1. And Psalm 62 says, truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. You know, what do we learn there? We learn that to wait <clears throat> in silent is to expect. It's to observe. It's to, re it's to reflect. To rest, right? <clears throat> if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, if I am to wait in silence, I'm expecting for the Lord to move on my behalf, right? I'm reflecting on God's promises. You know, that's why I wrote the introduction right here. It says, it says, uh, what we learn here from David's response is to be silent and to allow God to move on our behalf. You know, that's why it's important to know his word. Right? <clears throat> to know his promises and to believe in them. Right? <clears throat> I mean, why does God want us to understand, to memorize scripture? <laughs> Psalm 119, 11, right? It says, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not what, sin against you, right? <laughs> And the other reason why God wants us to memorize scripture is it's 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 because because um, everything that God does has an address. <clears throat> everything that God does has an address. <clears throat> and I think that he's he's, he's taking us to uh, to uh, to Job chapter 31. I think we'll go to Job chapter 31 and we'll, we'll reference we'll reference uh, verses 3 and 4. We're going to reference Psalm 62, 3 and 4 with Job chapter 31. Because Job chapter 31, you know, like I said, when we went through the book of Job, we titled it Living the Life of Integrity. Job chapter 31 is the... Uh, here in Job chapter 31 is a... Um, Is what David is what uh, is that Job <clears throat> is claiming that he did not do, but yet is they're they're spreading lies like they are with David here. They're slandering. They're slandering him. They're slandering his name, slandering his character, spreading rumors, spreading lies. Uh, but let's take uh, Job chapter 31. <clears throat> uh, once again, we, we titled that Living a Life of Integrity, you know. And that's what it's about, you know. What happens when we live a life of integrity? The enemy is going to want to attack our character. He's going to want to attack our piety. You know, our commitment to God. They're going to try to slander us in each way they can. 
Uh, but let's let's take uh, the chapter, Job chapter 31. Are, are you there? <clears throat> not me, not yet. Hold on. <laughs> not yet. Okay, yeah, go to Job chapter 31. Uh, Job chapter 31. Mm -hmm. Or give Raul time to get there. <clears throat> yeah. Chapter chapter what? Chapter 31. 31. In the book of Job. Yeah, 31. And we're referencing um, Psalm 62. Psalm 62, 3 and, 3 and 4 is because they're attacking. David's enemies are attacking his character. They're attacking his piety. They're attacking his... his um, como se dice? His commitment to the Lord, right? Chapter th chapter thirty one. What did you say? Of Job. Yeah. Thirty one. What? No, just uh, we're gonna read the whole chapter. Oh, all right. So Job chapter thirty one. <clears throat> you there, Adolfo? Yeah. I bet you want to take us in. Yeah. Chapter thirty one. I make a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a mate? For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance is of the Almighty from on high? It is not destruction to the wicked, and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Does not he see my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked with vanity or my food had hasted to deceit, let me be weighed in, in even balance that God might know my integrity. If my step had turned out on the way, and mine heart walked after my eyes, and if any blood had called to mine hands, then let me sow and let another eat, yes, let my offspring be rooted out of, of mine heart have been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, let them then let my wife grain unto another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is an Ahanias crime. Yeah, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. Verse 12. Uh, verse 12, do you want to take it? Yeah. Okay, verse uh, Job 31, 12. It is a fire that burns to destruction. It would have uprooted my harvest. If I have denied justice to any of my servants, whether male or female, when they are when they had a grievance against me, what will I do when God confronts me? What will I answer when when called to account? Did not he who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same one from us, both within us, within our mothers? If I have denied the desires of the poor or let the eyes of the widow grow weary, if I have kept my bread to myself, not sharing it with the fatherless, but from my youth I reared them as a father would, and from my birth I guided the widow. If I have seen any more perishing for lack of clothing or the needy without garments and their hearts did not did not bless me for warning them with the fleas from my sheep. If I have raised my hand against the fatherless, knowing that I have influence in court, then let my arm fall off, fall far, fall from the shoulder, let it be broken off at the joint. For I dread destruction from God, and I fear of his splendor. I could do not do such things. 
If I put my trust in gold or said to pure gold, you are my security. If I have rejoiced over my great wealth, the fortune my hand had gained, If I had regarded the sun in its radiance, or the moon moving in splendor, so that my heart was securely enticed, and my hand offered them a kiss of homage, then these old, all, then these also would be sins to, to 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 be judged, for I would have been unfaithful to God on the high. If I have rejoiced at my enemy's misfortunes or gloated over the trouble that came to him. I have not allowed my mouth to sin by invoking a curse against their life. If those of my ho household have never said, who has not been filled with Job's meat? But no stranger had to spend the night in the street. For my door was always open to the traveler. If I had concealed my sin, as people do, by hiding my by hiding my guilt in my heart, because I feared the crowd, and dreaded dreaded the contempt of my of the clan, that I kept silent and would not go outside. Chapter thirty five. Oh, okay. that I had someone to hear me! I sign now my defense. Let the Almighty answer me. Let my accuser put this indictment in writing. Surely I would wear it on my shoulder. I would put it on like a crown. I would give him the account of my every step. I would present it to him as it as to a ruler. If my land cries out against me and all its furrows are wet with tears, if I have devoured it, yield without payment, or broken the spirit of its of its tenant, then let the briars come up instead of wheat, and stink wheat instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. Is it? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> what do we learn there? What we learn there is what it really looks like to be a man of integrity. What it really looks like to be a man of integrity is what we learn there. You know, Job is, is defending himself here. Right? Como dijo el Raúl. Oh, I think Adolfo read this one. Right? It says, if, verse 5 says, if I have walked in with falsehood, or if my foot has hastened to deceit, let me be weighed on honest scales that God may know my integrity. Verse 7, if my step has turned from the way or my heart has walked after my eyes or if any spot ad adhires, adheres to my hands, then let me, let, let me sow and another eat. Yes, let my harvest be rooted out. <clears throat> I mean, this is what it looks like to be a man of integrity. Right? I mean, I titled it Living a Life of Integrity, but it's also titled as what it really looks like to, to be a man of integrity. You know, and to make a covenant with your eyes. <clears throat> you know, Job 31, my new King James says, verse 30, chapter 31, right? Verse 1 says, says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? You know, what is a covenant? <clears throat> you know, a covenant is a sacred trust between you and God. And Job is saying, hey, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? And the reason why I'm connecting this chapter with uh, Psalm 62 is because of verse 24 también, right? Verse 24, Job 31, it says, If I have made gold my hope or said to find gold, you are my confidence. <laughs> I 
I mean, that right there speaks volume. And we're going to find out why in Psalm 62. Because in Psalm 62, it teaches us not to, you know, a false hope in man and a false hope in, 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 in wealth. Mm. You know, in Psalm 62, 10 says, if riches, David said, if riches increase, do not set your heart upon it. <clears throat> if riches increase, do not set your heart upon it. Psalm 62, 10, right? But right here in Job 30, 31, verse 24 says, if I have made gold my hope, or said to find gold, you are my confidence. If, Job says, if I have I had made gold my hope. You know, put in your put in your your hope in, in, in your finances. Put in your hope in, in gold and treasury and in man. Right? Verse 25 says, if I have rejoiced because my wealth was great. And because my hand had gained much. Notice that. If I have rejoiced because my wealth was great. And because my hand had gained much. Notice that. <clears throat> I mean it's not. Uh, what is it? First Timothy 6.10. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. Right? <clears throat> but we. That it's not, it's not, it's not that the man that it's not that the man is not the man with the money, but that the money has the man. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> and it's true. Sometimes your fetia has you. Yep. And you know your money's ruling you <clears throat> instead of you ruling your money. You know that's why David. Well, we're going to see it in Psalm sixty-two ten. You know what David said. He said, if riches increase, do not set your heart upon it. And, you know, and Job here is, is you know, he's, he's, he's a man of integrity. You know, what, what, what it looks like to be a man of integrity. Right? To make a covenant. With, make a covenant. He says, I made a covenant with you know, a sacred trust. With my eyes. <clears throat> I mean, his heart, I mean, como dice este, I mean, verse 19, right? I think I will write that one. It says, if I have, verse 19 of Job 31, if I have seen anyone perish for lack of clothing or any poor man without covering. I mean, you know, whoever came to Job, you know, the people who came to Job, I mean, nobody lacked anything when you came to Job. I mean, remember, it says that Job was the richest, one of the richest men in the East. I mean, what Job didn't, what, what didn't Job have? I mean, you came to Job, he prayed for you. And we know that he was a man of prayer. Mm -hmm. He was a man of integrity. I mean, he would pray, rise up early and pray for his son, for his daughters. Daily, on a daily basis. He would call for them, pray for them. He says, God forbid that they had shit. God forbid that they had sinned, had cursed God in their hearts. Right? We can't see that. We can't see our sons or our daughters cursing God in their hearts. He says, God forbid that my sons or my daughters had cursed God in their hearts. So we know that he was a man of prayer. And we know that he was a man of great wealth. But here he's declaring. He's declaring his integrity. You know, once again, if I had made, gold, verse 24, if I had made gold my hope or said to find gold, you are my confidence. We're going to see that word confidence in Psalm 62. <clears throat> I mean, that's why I kind of like, I go, man, it was like Job chapter 31 right there. I mean, down the line. And David también, you know, David was, I mean, David what knew what it was like to be without. You know, like the Apostle Paul says, I know how to be without and I know to, I know to have, I know how to be, how to abase. You know, I know what it's like to have and, and to be without. To be with and to be with, without. Without food and without money. <laughs> you know, those things didn't move, didn't move Paul. And those things didn't move David. And those things didn't move Job. I mean, think about it. <clears throat> You know, once again, what didn't Job 
have. Like the Bible says, he was, he was the richest man in the East. Hmm. I mean, how much cattle didn't he have? And yet the Lord boasted and said, have you considered my servant Job? I mean, even the enemy knew what homeboy had right there. <clears throat> how much material wealth and, and everything that Job did prospered. I mean, not even when it was taken from him. Did he complain? He said, though you, he said, Job, Job 13, 15, he said, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Right? Even his wife came against that. <laughs> In Job 2, 9, right? <clears throat> she said, man, and look what God's done to you. <clears throat> you know, curse him. Curse God. Look where he has you. And Job chapter 2, verse 10, let you speak as a foolish woman speak. Shall we only accept good from God and not adversity? I mean, you know, that's why it kind of like brought, brought us back to Job. <clears throat> because uh, we're going to see uh, Psalm 62, how it references to Job. In a sense of his enemies calling, calling uh, uh, David out también. And bringing him to a, to a place of of attacking him, right, right here in Job sixty. I mean, in Psalm sixty two, Psalm sixty two three says, "How long will you threaten a man? Will will all will all of you attack as if he were a leaning wall and a tottering stone fence? I mean, how how long are you going to continue to attack me to and to try to?" Destroy me, he said, David. In the same way they're trying to destroy Job right here. <clears throat> you know, that's why I referenced Job 31. Because these are the things that David, I mean, that Job claims that he did not. Uh, it's a list <clears throat> that Job says he did not, he did not commit. <clears throat> you know, nobody came to Job without, a, without any clothing. <laughs> I mean, if he didn't have clothing. Man, he, he homeboy clothed you. Believe me, mm -hmm. he gave you the comida. He gave you, you know, the clothes you needed. Right here, verse twenty of Job thirty-one it says, "If if his heart has not has not blessed me, and if he was not warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have raised my hands against the fatherless, when I saw." I had help in the gate. So these are the things that Job claims that he did not commit. Right? <clears throat> I mean, everything you give, he gives you. Right? Mm -hmm. Everything you give, everything I give, he gives us. Right? <clears throat> I mean, in order to give, I mean, be blessed, be blessed to be a blessing, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I'm not being blessed, then how can I bless you? How can I bless my family? I mean, we think of Abraham, right? <clears throat> when God called Abraham, he says, he says, through you, all nations will be blessed. And those who curse you, I'm going to curse, right? But be a blessing. Be blessed to be a blessing. And I, I like what Richard says. Richard says, <laughs> he says, uh, bless from the best, right? <clears throat> and and we're blessed by we're blessed from the best because God is the best. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's why I wanted to bring you guys to Job thirty one <clears throat> because when I started reading about here in verse three and. And four in Psalm 62, it, it, it took me right to Job 31. I go, we got to read Job 31. Because it's going to connect easily with uh, Psalm 62. You know. <clears throat> but let's go to Psalm 62 and then we'll just. Uh, just leave a note on, on, on Job 31. Let's go ahead and read the chapter. 
the Psalm 62. And then we'll share a little bit more about that. But um, Psalm 62, right? Psalm 62, verse 1 reads, Truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. Verse 2, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not, I shall not be greatly moved. Verse 3, how long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. Verse 4, the only consult to cast him. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. Selah. <clears throat> my soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. Uh, verse 6, a little. He only is my rock in my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times. Yes, people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are vanity and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, the power belongs unto God. Also unto you, O Lord, belong mercy, for you renders to every man according to his work. Amen. Notice that <clears throat> verse 10, right? Como <clears throat> Adolfo just read. It says, do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope, and robbery, if riches increase, do not set your heart on them. <clears throat> I mean, that right there, we reference to Job uh, 31, verse 24, right? Job 31, 24, in reference to Psalm 62, 10. Once again, verse, uh, Job 31, 24 says, If I have made gold my hope, or said to find gold, you are my, you my confidence. Right? And Adolfo just read Psalm, 60, Psalm 62, 10. It says, do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. <clears throat> I mean, having money is not sin. <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's trusting in your wealth. That's the problem. That's why it says here in verse 9, of Psalm 62, it says, Surely men of low degree are a vapor, men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. <clears throat> In other words, man has no man has no weight. Men of high degree are, are a lie. If they are weighed on the on, on the scales, they are they are they are altogether lighter than vapor. I mean, it's, um, and then we have the, como se dice este, verse 11, right? <clears throat> Adolfo just read that. It says, God has spoken once, twice, I have heard this, that power belongs to God. That all power belongs to God and to God alone. Right? I mean, we reference that to Job, uh, John chapter 19, 
verses 10 and 11. Right, it's, it's it's where we it's where we see uh, Pilate questioning Jesus in John chapter John chapter nineteen ten and eleven Matthew Mark Luke and John chapter nineteen. Right. Let's let's go ahead and take that. Uh, John chapter nineteen. Uh, John chapter nineteen, verse one. You there, Adolfo? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, chapter nineteen in the book of John says, "Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and escorted him." Go on. Yeah, go ahead. Take the chapter. And the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put it on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that he might that you might know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take ye him and crucify him. For I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Verse 8. Uh, verse 8, Raul, you want to take it? What chapter was that, though? John what? Uh, John chapter 19. John. Oh, 19. And other folk stopped at um, at seven, right? Other folk, you stopped at seven. Yeah, I stopped at seven. So, so nineteen eight. That's where I start. Yes. Okay. When yes. when when Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where where do you where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said, don't you realize I have power either to free you or crucify you? And Jesus answered, you would have to, you have no power over me. If I, if I, if it were not given to you from above, therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From from then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the but the Jewish leader kept shouting, "If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar." When Pilate heard this, he he brought Jesus out and sat down on the sat down on the judge. The judge's seat had a palace known as the stone pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabatha. It was the day of preparation of Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, and crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. 
Finally, Pilate handed him over to them and to be crucified. The crucifixion of Jesus. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had noticed, prepared a fast, fast into the cross. Pilate had noticed, noticed, prepared and fast to the cross. It, it read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but then this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, for one each of them with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from the bottom. Top to bottom. Let, let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot and who will get it. This happened that the scriptures might be fulfilled, as said. They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Okay. Well, that, that's good right there. <clears throat> I mean, the next verse is, is um, well, the next verse is, didn't the next verse is where Catholics defend themselves, right? <laughs> That's what it's reminding me of. <laughs> I mean, if, I mean, you know, I'm not degrading any Catholics that might be listening, but, you know, verse 25, right? <clears throat> I read verse 25, Adolfo. Yes. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all these things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge, they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon a hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was the high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. And, and forthwith came there our blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And his word is knowing that they say the truth, that you might believe. For these things were, do, were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture say, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. Verse 38. Uh, verse 38, Adolfo, you have to... After this, Joseph and Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus secretly for fear of the Jews, 
asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus, verse 39, and Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds, verse 40. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strip, strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury, verse 41. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet laid. Verse 42, so there they laid Jesus because the Jews, the Jews' preparation day for the tomb was nearby. Hmm. I mean, for scripture to be fulfilled, right? Yes. Um. And how are we going to tie up this with uh, Job in, in uh, Psalm 62? Psalm 62 is the, the key verses is 10 and 11. <clears throat> uh -huh. If we look at Psalm 62, <clears throat> Psalm 62, 11, Psalm 62, 11 reads, God has spoken once, twice, I have heard this. Heard what? That all power belongs to God alone. Mm -hmm. All power belongs to God alone. <clears throat> That's why I connected it with the New Testament, because Jesus said that all power. You know, Jesus said <clears throat> in verse uh, John chapter 19, 11 says, Jesus answered, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has a greater sin. Well, we know who that was. <laughs> Judas, right? <laughs> right. I mean, you know, Judas led to Jesus' crucifixion. <clears throat> I mean, because they couldn't recognize Jesus. As Judas said, you know, Judas said, you know, the one whom I kiss, we, you know, arrest him. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where we connect Proverbs 27, 6. It says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kiss of an enemy is deceitful, right? Because Judas said, the one whom I kiss, arrest him. And Proverbs 27, 6 says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kiss, Judas, of uh -huh. an enemy is deceitful. Right? Judas kissed him and had Jesus arrested. But that's what he said right here in verse 11 of John 19. It says, therefore, the one who delivered me to you has a greater sin, has the greater sin. And that's where I, that's where I connected it. Mm -hmm. 19, 10 and 11 was the key verse. Yeah. You know, Pilate, Pilate didn't have power. He, mm -hmm. said, he said that he had the power. <laughs> right? Verse 10. Yeah. <laughs> Then Pilate said to him, are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you and to and the power to release you? Mm -hmm. I mean, he, you know, but Jesus says, all authority was given to me. All power. And the other translation says, all authority has been given to me. Um... And then I did, um, it's verses, it's Matthew 28, 18 and 19, <clears throat> in reference to the power. All authority has been given to me. In reference to all power has been given to me in John chapter 19, 10 and 11. We have Matthew 28. 18 and 19. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You there, say amen. <laughs> amen. 
A ver. Yeah, he says, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Right. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even into the end of the world. Amen. Let's let's read uh chapter 28, 1 through 1 through 20, so we can let the listeners in, into the story where we're referencing. In Matthew? Uh yeah, right here in Matthew 28. Matthew chapter 28. Start from the beginning of the okay. Are you there, Raul? Nope, right here. Hold on. Matthew 28? Yeah. Matthew 28? Yeah, Matthew. Yeah. Matthew is the first chapter of the New Testament. Yeah. 28. Matthew 28. Yeah, we, we turn a lot of pages here, brother. <laughs> You get to know your Bible real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember I remember people used to complain, no, no, don't go to that church because they turned a lot of pages, you know. <laughs> Which one is that, man? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> they, didn't, they didn't like, you know, turning pages all the time. Just keep me in one chapter. No me lleves a otro, you know, just keep me on that one. <laughs> and, then, and then there's other people that like to turn pages, you know. Mm. <clears throat> um, but I don't know, to me here in this ministry, we turn pages. <laughs> you know, you, you get into your Bible. Always put, you know, put your marker on, on the chapter that we're studying and because I'm going to do a lot of referencing. Yeah, okay. Um, but it's to build up our faith, to encourage us, you know. Como dijo, mm -hmm. You know, here in Psalm, Psalm 62, he says, Psalm 62, 11 says, God has spoken once and twice I... I have heard this, that that all power belongs to God. You know, that's what encouraged David to put his trust, his faith in God. So what we're referencing is God's power, mm -hmm. God's authority. So we're going to Matthew 28, you know, the key verses 18 and 19 here, here in Matthew 28. You so ready? Have it. <clears throat> okay. In the end of the Sabbath, as he began to down toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He's not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen. From the dead, and behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did not run to bring his disciples word, and did run to bring his disciples word. Verse 9. I really want to take it. Okay, 28, what, what, what would you uh, stop at? Verse 8, uh, you take it 9, verse 9. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clapped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to... Galilee, there they will see. There, there, there they will see. This is verse 11. 
while the women uh, while the women were were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything had happened that had happened. When the chief priest had met with the elders and the devise, and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole away the and stole him away while he we were asleep if this report gets to the governor we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble so the so, soldiers took the money and did not and did as they were instructed and this story has has been widely circulated among the Jews to the to this very day. Keep going. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, just go to uh, finish it at twenty. Okay. The Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples. You know what? I read this today too. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was reading this today. It, Amen. You know how they how how they went to the um, the upper room and they were supposed to you know the Holy Spirit was supposed to come down upon them. You know, right? Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing, baptizing them in the, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the teaching them to obey, teach, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. <laughs> it's it. Yeah. That was that was the key verse right there. <clears throat> Donde dijo de Raul, right? It says that Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on the earth. This is what David is expressing here in Psalm 62 when he says, Psalm 62, 11 says, God has spoken once, twice. I have heard this, that, that the power belongs to God. Do you know the crazy thing, Pastor? Mm -hmm. Is that he has given us that authority also. In, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just mind-blowing just to think that, that, that we are uh special in God's eyes and that he gives us the power to go out there and do something better than uh strive for money riches and glory but to save a soul from hell you know to save a soul that is destined to go to hell and he gave us that power by us just being there, willing to be able to be used by him and guided by the Holy Spirit, you know, he he, he just uses us if we are available. If we are available, he will cause moments in certain days, certain times and places where there will be someone who is in need. And uh, he will do everything we get to the point where we really is it's not us to do anything really we just gotta be there and the lord is the one who does the job no matter what it is you know even if it is to encourage us or to 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 keep us help us to continue growing or to help us to learn the next step that he wants us or to meet that person that 
that uh, is, is in need, you know, of salvation. In, in my uh, way, for some reason, the Lord brings uh, drug addicts in my, in my path. Uh, not all the time, but yes, it, it, in certain places that I go, he always brings uh, one or two homeless, and uh, you know they most ninety nine point nine percent they carry spirits and demons. They are slaving them from reality, slaving them from you know their their own lives, and they're being destroyed. And they are in need of uh, encouragement and salvation. And, you know, the God puts us there for a purpose, uh, you know, from time to time. Whenever we are available, we, when we least suspect it, there will be someone, you know, that the Lord will guide us to speak to. And that's one of the reasons why we ought to be prepared in season and out of season. You know, and that's one of the reasons I love uh, uh, gatherings like this one, because uh, it's good to be in contact, you know, with other brothers. Right now, I'm uh, kind of low in battery, because, you know, usually I go to a Bible study on Thursday mornings uh, over there at Huntington Beach with some other brothers. And I haven't been able to attend because uh, one of my daughters had a car accident and I've been taking her to work and, you know, uh, her uh, two kids, I've been taking them to school. So I haven't been able to participate. But then, then again, I don't stop, you know, reading the, the scriptures and the Lord does... Uh, uh, you know, he does uses uh, the occasion to bring different things. You know, right now I'm in the, in a position where uh, I'm digging for gold in a different places, which is in my own my own family. Uh, but you know, it's amazing to me how the Lord does give us that power that that we that we need, you know, to rescue the souls of the people that, that need salvation, mostly or encouragement or a word of encouragement or like Brother Lalo said at the beginning before we were on the air, you know, the go and talk to brothers, you know, to encourage them to keep, keep up the good work and continue the ministry, you know, because we are a body, we are a body that needs to be connected at all times so that we might have that power, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, because if we get disconnected, then, then we will know, we will not be charged and we will not have that power within ourselves. And we will probably not see things that the Lord wants us to see if we are connected, you know? Right, right. Yeah, what you said right now reminded me of First Peter 3.15, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I quoted it last time, right? First Peter 3.15 says, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Mm -hmm. You know, you also reminded me of Acts 1 8. <laughs> right? Acts 1 8 said, You shall receive power when power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you said, you know, this fellowship, the fellowship with other brothers, come he said, Randy, Proverbs 27 7, right? Proverbs 27 17. Right, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen the countenance of another man. Yeah, amen. amen. Right, 
And that's what you're sharing, you know, that when you when you fellowship, when you share, you sharpen it, sharpen the countenance of your other brother, so he may be go out and share the gospel, share the good news. But mm -hmm. once again, right here where it says, um, uh, you know, the Great Commission, como dijo Raúl, right here in Matthew 28, 19, that was the Great Commission, right? It says, go mm -hmm. therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. You know, the Great Commission, the Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It's a commandment to be obeyed. You know, the Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It's a commandment to be obeyed. Mm -hmm. You know, God's commanding us, <laughs> right? That's right. Not giving us an option to do it or not to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right <clears throat> you know it's it's the it's the uh, it, it's the commission the commission the great commission is not an option mm -hmm. but it's to but to be considered not an option to be considered it's a it's a commandment to be obeyed mm -hmm. you know right. so that, that doesn't give us an option there mm -hmm. No, he says, go mm -hmm. and do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, like, it's just like we're doing it right now. We are doing that. You know, we are doing what he is telling us to do, which is go. So we're here. We Why are not? here. <laughs> so we are, we are, you know, obeying what he wants us to do to have further information you know so they as we go and retire tonight our minds and our hearts will be ready for the next day you know to see what the lord will have us to do like uh, today i had a a divine appointment you know with uh, my wife over there at the park where we go and walk uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, as I was walking, uh, I was just meditating upon some things. There was this young fellow uh, reading a book uh, through the park one way to the other. And we crossed uh, ways and uh, then I turned on my, uh, my telephone and I listened to... Uh, it's a little side that is called shorts, which had a lot of uh, encouragement from different pastors and teachers in sayings of uh, Greeks and uh, philosophy and stuff like that. And uh, I was listening to it and doing an exercise at the same time. And uh, as I was passing by him, I believe he heard uh, a pastor that he was he was talking and uh, so we went away and uh, we met at the other side of the park and he went on to me and called me and he introduced himself and uh, you know he said that he uh, listened to what I was uh, listening and uh, we start talking and uh, he's a Christian, and he was reading a book, one written by uh, another Christian that was talking about the book of Ecclesiastes. You know, it was a kind of a pretty, pretty good-sized book. And uh, he was, he's a student of the Lord, and he, uh, according to what he shared with me, he's uh, interested in, in learning as much as he can. And uh, uh, so, so I was encouraging him uh, as well as he encouraged me and prayed with me uh, at, for the Lord to guide us and, and use us uh, deeply as we go in uh, our own ministries. And, uh, you know, in my 
way of learning is always has been as uh, what they call uh, a scripture only. I always been uh, attracted to the Bible, the 66 books of the Bible, and that's it. I very rarely, maybe I read one or two, maybe three books at the most of uh, a different a different kind that were written by Christians, but very rarely. I, I just don't. I just read the scriptures. I just like to read the scriptures. And I advise him that now in the days that we're living in right now, as uh, as urgent as it is, because of the, the way the world is going, you know, with society, with uh, 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 politics and, uh, and humanity and Christianity and school-wise, government-wise, and the scriptures and Israel and all that, uh, I encourage him, uh, instead of using his time to read all of those books, there, I, I, but I, make, I made it clear that it's nothing wrong to, to read those kind of books, you know, because you learn. But I kind of told him, the, you know, instead of reading all those gigantic books, to use technology and get the short version of the books, you know, with quotes and stuff like that from the author, or from other teachers and pastors or whatever, in uh, but not to spend too much time reading too many books apart from the Bible, because uh, I uh, try to get the uh, the encouragement of the idea of how the the, the Bible. It's a straight word from God himself. You know, in in my mind, why would I want to spend time apart from God's word when I, I explain that he will teach me, the Holy Spirit teaches me according to what's written. He said that he teaches us and that we don't need uh, any other uh, teachers, uh, but that he will take care of us and guide us as we go and learn from him, straight from him. And he agreed, and he said, the, the, you know, he's got his own way of uh, uh, doing his learning and, and stuff. But that he was going to take it into a consideration, and he was going to he was going to uh, meditate upon it and pray about it, because I know that it's not for everybody. You know, we're all different. We all uh, we belong to a body, and I explain all that that we all belong to a body, and the Lord uses us in a different ministers in a different areas. And I just was, you know, sharing the way the Lord uh, uses me in my life. And uh, that was my divine appointment for today, you know, to encourage the young guy, very young. And, uh, I, you know, I was so happy because, like I was telling him, that he's the future of the United States according to what the, 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 the mess the, the country and the world is right now in, in society. And it's up to us Christians as he says in uh, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, that if my people, which is called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sins and heal their land. I told him that I, you know, that was one of my the first scriptures that I ever read, and he got he got inserted into my my mind and into my brain from the very beginning and it caused an impact in my life and I carry that scripture you know all all these years and I believe that that's the only hope that the United States has you know uh, for the body of Christ which are as us his people you know to come to him and and ask 
you know, forgiveness for what we have done, for what we have not done, you know, which is, you know, to 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 stay straight in his path, you know, what he wants us to do, what he's commanded us to do. And, you know, and we have fun. We have fun, but it was it was beautiful. It was beautiful to to meet uh, little brother Bradley. Is his name? His name was Bradley. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. What's up, Big Ready? Hey, Big Randy. Welcome back. It's connecting to audio. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you locked out. There he is again. Yeah. The um the other thing that I was gonna point out too is the um the reward, <clears throat> the reward in the uh, I'm trying to find that one scripture that I had for the reward. You know how we have the uh, the uh, como se dice the Right here in Psalm 62, right? <clears throat> uh -huh. Psalm 62. Uh, we referenced 11. And when yeah. we were speaking about the power of God, you know, yeah. all authority was given over to me. Yeah. All authority belongs to God, to God alone. Amen. We have verse 12. It says, verse 12 of, of Psalm 62. It says, also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. For you render to each one according to his word. Each, for you reward, for you render to each one according to his word. But it was Is just that, one, yeah. Right? I mean, according to what we do individually as an as a individual Below mercy, for thou renders to every man according to his work. Yeah, I mean, you look at it both ways. I mean, I mean right here yeah. it says reward, right? My little reference scripture right here, uh -huh. it says reward. Uh, in my New King James, uh, right next to the little, right, right after, right after according to his work, it uh -huh. says, says render. Uh -huh. It says reward. It says reward. Yeah. Okay. It says it's a verse twelve, right? Go ahead. Yeah. Take... Also unto thee, O Lord, belong mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Right. It says. Um, it says God promises us salvation as a free gift, but clearly calls us to live a life he can bless both here on earth and then the life to come. Rewards are distributed to the, to the saints according, in accordance with the nature of their lives here on earth. Rewards are distributed to the saints in accordance with the nature of their lives here on earth. I mean, you know, Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace we've been saved through faith, right? Mm -hmm. It says, For by grace you've been saved through faith, Ephesians 2 8. Mm -hmm. Can't hear you, Big Ready? You there? He's trying to connect. I can't hear him. Yeah. Sorry for coming, Pastor. It's Jaime. 
Hey, Pastor, how are you doing? Uh, are you guys doing today, brothers? How are you doing, Jaime? Can you guys hear me? You have your camera. Hear you. yeah. What's up, Pastor? Again, brother, your, your camera's off. Is it? Well, let's see how. Let's see if I can turn it on. Are you on the laptop? Yeah. Okay, it is off. There, it's on now. You got your alley hat on. Yes, sir. Pero apenas te ves. <laughs> no. Did you just wake up or what? <laughs> no, no, no. I was um, basically, uh, I was trying to, I was doing Bible study on my own, but I, then I remembered, oh, man, the Bible, I was trying to prepare, you know? Trying oh, okay. To, trying to get into know. Uh, what are we on right now? Uh, Psalm 62. Psalm 62. That's where I'm opening it right here. How funny, I was, uh, I was studying Psalms. And uh, basically preparing myself for the uh, for the Bible study mm -hmm. that will be God's, God's word and be in there correctly. And physically, uh, it just time went by real quick. And I check and I'm like, man, it's already ten o'clock. Shoot, you know I mean, sorry. So sorry for coming in late. It's okay, man. As long as you're you logged in, brother. Psalms thirty-two, you said. Uh, Psalm sixty-two. Oh, sixty-two. Amen. For all those that don't know me, um, God bless you guys. And my name is Jaime Juan Rostro Jr. Um, I'm just uh, basically been a follower over here with Jr. for a while, since when he first started. So it's just, you know, he's, he's a real good friend to me. So basically, uh, he's devoted. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. No, Adolfo, I met Adolfo at the car show. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So, Blalo. How are you doing? ¿Cómo estás? No, Blalo can hear you. He's probably asleep. <laughs> Psalm big, 62. Big Randy was trying to connect, but I don't know if he lost. We lost him. Was he really trying to come in? Was he coming in at the same time as me? Or? Yeah. Okay. No, but when we're talking about the reward, um, we're referencing Psalm 62, 12. Psalm 62, 12. Read that one, Jaime. Psalm 62, 12? Yeah. Psalm 62, 12. Let me get it real quick. Um, Read and 12. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to find it. Okay, you're not there? Yeah, I'm there, but I had trying to get to 12 real quick. Okay. Uh, 12, 12, 12, 12. Um, mine only goes to 11. It's uh, Psalms 11, basically the furthest. Uh, oh, here we no, go. Psalm 62. Oh, okay. Yeah, I found it. Verse 11 and 12. Okay, God, God, Beth, and spoken once or twice have I begging that the power that the power uh, belong unto the unto the get on the galaxy and ex extra remembrance to every thing according to his work. Did that make sense when I read that? Uh poquito. Uh, read it, what are you reading out of um out of a King King James. It's a small Bible. So King James Version. Um, Let me get my glasses real quick because it's small reading. Sorry. One second. Raul desapareció también. Oh, I'm here. Oh, there he is. I'm just taking my medicine. I usually take it at night before I go to bed, so I'm taking in the morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go I, just, to... I need to take I mine too. Huh? I need to take mine too. <laughs> at night, yeah, because you, you know you get up to go to work during the morning and running around and then you forget it. Yes. So I take mine when I get around right now before I go to bed. I usually take all my medicines. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
You still go to work, brother Raul? Yeah, I, I get up around 5.30, but I'm out of the house by 6.30. Okay. First, I take my dog for a walk in the morning. Okay. God, hate and spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God and also unto thee. O Lord, belongeth mercy or through reverence to every man according to his work. Is that better? Andale. Had a shine of light. It's a real small reading. It's a small Bible, a pocket Bible. Yeah, that's, so, that made more sense. You know, but we're referencing reports. Psalm 62, 11, and 12. The reference? No, I'm talking, I was just, Randy's talking, but I can't. I'm telling him I can't hear him. Oh. He's trying to connect. Uh, but no, we're, we're referencing right now. Um, according to his, according to his work, right? Yes, sir. And that's Matthew chapter five, verse twelve. You know, once again, it says God promises us salvation as a free gift, but clearly causes us to live a life He can bless both here on earth and, and in the life to come. Amen. Both here in the life to come, Matthew chapter 5, verse 12. Referencing Psalm 62, 12. With Matthew chapter 5, 12. <laughs> That's the beatitude. <laughs> Beatitudes, right? Chapter 5, verse 12. Yeah, Matthew chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Notice that. Great is your reward. Mm -hmm. It says. In heaven. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, como dice este, God promises a, God promises salvation as a free gift, but clearly causes us to live a life He can bless, both here on earth and in the life to come. Rewards are are distributed to the saints in accordance with the nature of their lives here on earth. In other words, right? Let, well, let's read Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter, I mean, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Ephesians? Ephesians chapter 2. That's in the New Testament. Towards the back? Yeah, towards the back. I mean, the New Testament is what? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John at the beginning? It's after Galatians and Corinthians. Mm -hmm. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. 8 and 9. Uh, yeah. That's a year, hermano. Chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Chapter two, Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Chapter two, verses eight and nine. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter two. For he that wrote uh, effectively in Peter to the apostles, the apostleship of the yeah. cir circumcisions, the same was mighty in the, in the towards the Gentiles. And when... That's not it. No, that's not it? No. Oh, I, I was guilty. Sorry. Sorry about that. Ephesians chapter uh, 2. Oh, sorry. I hear Ephesians. Right here. Ephesians chapter 2. Sorry. Here we go. And then 8. Um, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. 
It is the gift, it is a gift of God, not of the work of last any man should boast. Amen. Amen. Pray. Uh -huh. The reward that so what's the reward that the Lord that uh, David is talking about here? Um, the reward. You know, uh, once again, if, uh, Psalm sixty-two, twelve. It says, "Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. For your tender, for you render each one to his, according to his work." And then, in my in the little parentheses, it says reward. I mean, it's, you know, like right here, Ephesians, como dijo el, el, el Jaime right now, he just read that, right? Ephesians 2, 6 and 8, <clears throat> que dice, I mean, 8, 8 and 9, it says, for by grace you, you have been saved through faith. And not of your own selves, it is, a, it is a free gift of God. So we know that salvation is a free gift. It's not of works, verse 9, lest anyone should boast. Right, it's not, not anything that we've done, anything that we did. So the rewards that David is talking about here in Psalm 62, 12, it's the uh, the reward. Once again, rewards are distributed to the saints in accordance with the nature of their lives here on earth. Once again, God promises salvation as a free gift, but he clearly calls us to live a life that he can bless. Right? To live a life that he can bless. If I'm being disobedient, <laughs> right? If I'm not being true to his word, then how can I be blessed? How can I be blessed? How can I expect God to bless me? <laughs> Amen. You know, to the faithful, he shows himself faithful to the, you know, right? <clears throat> if I, I am to you what you are to me. <laughs> if you're faithful to me, plus I'm faithful to you, I'm faithful to you. I mean, so by grace, you've been saved through faith, right? So we know that uh, that salvation is a free gift. But the reward that, you know, the rewards that we're talking about are in accordance to the nature of their lives. Those are the rewards that are going to be distributed. Not salvation, because salvation is a free gift. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y luego dice aquí que dice, it said, God rewards, God rewards, God's rewards are far more than what we deserve. God's rewards are far more than what we deserve. You know, why is that? <laughs> why are God's, God's rewards are far, are, are far more greater than what we deserve? But because of God's grace, right? And what is grace? Grace is undeserved mercy. Grace is undeserved mercy. But the grace that forgives... But the grace that forgives is also the grace that transforms you, <laughs> right? <clears throat> the grace that forgives is also the grace that transforms you. Um, so that's what I was going to share as far as rewards. Um, but we also have that in this day. Como se dice este? There, I don't know. I didn't write that one down, but I know there's one. In, I know there's one in Revelation. <laughs> I just can't find it. <clears throat> but those are the two verses that I had written down. Matthew chapter five, verse twelve, and then we're referencing Ephesians chapter two, verses eight and nine. In regards to God promises his salvation as a free gift, but clearly calls us to live a life. That he can bless. God's rewards are distributed to, to the saints in accordance to their nature, to the nature of their life here on earth. 
And I think that's one of the you know, reasons why, you know, Job también, you know, Job received a great blessing because he was a man of integrity. Right? We read Job chapter 31. You know, but what did the Lord say about Job? Um, I mean, the other thing that we see here is uh, is verse one of Psalm 62, right? You want to read that, Raul? Verses one and two of Psalm 62. Sorry, I'm taking you back again. <laughs> hear me, my God, as a, as I voice my complaint, protect my life from the threat of uh, of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the plots of the evil doers. That's your that's uh, Psalm sixty two one and two. Oh, that's sixty four. I'm sorry. You know what happened is that after eleven. Ya se cansa uno. Me, because I gotta get up. I wake up early. But that doesn't matter. I get as long as I get like five hours of sleep, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll close with this, so we don't get too far into it. Because we go deep, we go, we go. Man, we're here till like sometimes one o'clock. <laughs> Psalm sixty-two, verse one. But we'll do this one, yeah. Psalm sixty-two, two, verse two, verse one, right? Uh, one and two. Okay, truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I will never be shaken. Right. That's See, that, right. that's why I like the little, my, the little Bible because even though David read, he wrote this, I put myself that, put my myself here and when he, when he, when I say truly my soul finds rest in God you know I find my rest in God but my salvation come, uh, my salvation comes from him truly he is my rock and my salvation he is my fortress and he is my fortress and I will never be shaken so like even though David wrote this for himself you know to God I put myself in here in here like if I wrote it and it comes out better for me, you know. I, mm -hmm. I love this little Bible I bought. You know, I, like I said, I got four of them, and I'm going to give them to you so you can give to the rest, you know. Yeah. The book of Psalms, I love it, man, this little book. Because it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the, all the other stuff on it, like the Bibles, you know. It's mm -hmm. just strictly just the word. And, it, you know, it just says, from the director of music with strings, instruments of David. That's all it says. And the rest, and it doesn't have like a, you know, like a study Bible does, you know. So I, that's what I like about this little book. Yeah, I'm, not adding, I, I'm not adding or subtracting. You know, I'm just, you know, reading what, what David was going through, you know. David right. was going through, through, through everything that he wrote right here in the book of Psalms. You know, that's what David went through, you know. So... That's why, you know, I, I go through this daily myself, you know. Daily I go through all this stuff and I find myself, you know, I, I, I go back to the scriptures, you know. When I get into some trouble like this, that's when I, that's when like this one, like when it says, truly my soul rests in God. My soul is rested right now, you know. So... I, I take that and I try to take it as far as I can during the daytime until somebody makes me mad or something. <laughs> then the scriptures change, you know, and then we got to run to another scripture to bring us down, you know. But right. <laughs> this is, that, that's what happens to me because I work in construction and I have to deal with all these guys, you know. And it's a little bit hard for me, so I have to be in, I have to be in point, bro. I gotta be all right on point, man, because you know it's it's real easy to 
like turn your your happiness to hate i mean in in a, in a you know like a like they say in a how do that in the trinkle of an eye whatever they say you know how it, in the blink of an eye man your emotions will change quick you know mm. so that's why you got to keep you got to keep you got to be point all day you know so yeah, that's why Psalm 119, 11 says, Psalm 119, verse 11 says, for it says, thy word have I kept in my heart that I might not sin against you, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. You know, <laughs> it's, it, it, you know, and, and God knows it's not, it's not easy for us, you know? God knows that, you know? He knows that our walk with him is not easy. You know, we're always going to confront um confusion every day you know and we just gotta just like to me i got i have this temper man that uh you tell these guys to do the this the thing that needs to get done and they don't do it the right way or when i come over there and they're, they're always sitting around or something you know so it's a challenge you know it's, every day is a challenge for me you no know, maybe to everybody not just me you know but that's why we had we got the scriptures to uh, remind us, you know, what we got to do. Yeah, well, remember that. Um, I mean, right now I'm reading on most. Right now I'm just going to reference Exodus 33. Um, you know, when Moses was challenged, <clears throat> when he was leading leading the Israelites. Um, oh yeah, you know, in Exodus Exodus 33. You know, it says that um, rest is a calming, rest is calming, calming ourselves down long enough to claim in any given situation, the presence and the promise, promises and the providence of God, which are ours in Christ. Amen. But, you know, and another thing, man, Moses had it even harder than a lot of us, man. You know, he comes, he comes down the mountain with, with the Ten Commandments. And what does he do? You know, he gets mad because these guys are are making, um, you know, statues of gold and to worship, you know, and doing all this. How do you think Moses felt that day? You know, <laughs> so that's what I'm telling you, man. We go through challenges, but Moses went through some real, real hard challenges, man. Even with his wife, his wife was always getting on him too. You know that why are we why are you serving God? He's not doing nothing and this and that. You know. <laughs> It, it, it's it's a challenge every day you know mm -hmm. it's a challenge it's just that it's up to you how far you want to take it out of the content you know mm. <laughs> I know right <laughs> yeah it's the, um... yeah I don't know my scriptures like you bro I mean you can go from page to page but I, I know because I read the bible so many times over and over, but I, I can't I can't memorize my scriptures. That's the only thing. So I can't go back and forth and tell you, oh yeah, this and this scripture, this is what happened, and this is what it's gonna need, you know, for you to even Job. Job, man, his wife and kids, you know, he went through he went through, man, some trouble, man. So I mean he, you know, he that like God said, you know. You know, look at look at my look at my uh my boy Job man look at <laughs> look what happened to him you know he lost a lot of stuff you know mm. right but to him it was nothing you know mm. money wasn't nothing like the, our scripture said today you know mm -hmm. all this stuff was nothing to him you know as long as he as long as he had God he he was he was okay with the, with everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. And then he then he had all these people tell him, well, the reason why you're like this is because you're not doing this, you know? And the reason why you're doing this, that's why all these things are happening to you, which it was wrong, you know? And there's people like that that come up to you and tell you, well, the reason why God is not with you is because you're not doing this, you're not walking this way. You're not doing the same, the things that you're supposed to. You're not saying the things that you're supposed to be saying, you know? So, 
Yeah, Joe Wood, he did go through a lot, you know. Right. But that's you know, I'm, like, a, I'm a I'm a uh, a little bit uh, in the same uh, boat uh, with your role, brother role, and uh -huh. in the sense of uh, the memor the memory session of the word. Uh, uh -huh. It's very seldom that I memorize scripture, and then you know we 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 we've been in the road reading and stuff yeah. like that. But I do believe, you know, the 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 word is already in the heart. You know, it, it's inscripted, yeah. like he says in there, in in the in the tablets of our heart, and it's mm -hmm. not gonna go away. You know, automatically, the word becomes alive within ourselves, and that's why we are the way we are. I mean, it, you know, you go out there and you feel, which it must be real tough. It is very famous very well known that uh, particular type of a job, you know, for, especially for a Christian, you know, yeah. they go in there among people that don't know Christ and it yeah. must be real tough. It must be real tough. And yeah. Maybe, and look, yeah. I brought my boss, I brought my boss to the Lord and she's coming you know, real good. And now she's almost as, you know, uh, I say as good as me, you know, but it's been <laughs> years. You know what? I'm glad I brought her to the Lord. You know, she's a lot more happy now, that lady. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's what you do. You you know, you run across people and and they tell you, why don't you do this? And I go, you know what? This is what I do. And I go to church, you know. Oh, I try to go to church every Sunday, but I don't. But not because my church moved away. It used to be right here in Buena Park, and now we're in La Mirada. So, but mm -hmm. I love their, I love, I love their uh, song service, you know. I like I like old gospel music. That's what I like. That's right. It's awesome. Yeah, the old gospel songs. Yes. Yeah, that's what I that's what I like. And they and 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 they mix it up. They make it like modern type, you know, almost like black gospel, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a nice song service that we have, you know. I mean, you know, it, it gets, everybody gets on fire, you know. Yeah, feel with the Holy Spirit. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, you walk in there and you can see everybody's jumping up and down, speaking in tongues, and I love all that, you know. Uh huh. Yeah, but um, she uh, sometimes you feel like, hey, man, why can't we be like that all day, you know? But then you gotta, <laughs> you have to get out to reality, you know. No, of course, <laughs> of course you do. Yeah, you do. Of course. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, I, every morning I, I read my Bible. You know, every awesome. morning I get up and then I gotta walk my dog, and then and then I go to work. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty cool. I like yeah. it. You know, yeah, it, 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 keeps me, it keeps me sane. Put it that way. You know. Of course. Of when course. I'm not reading, the, when I'm not reading the Word, forget it, man. I'm I'm no good. You know. Mm -hmm. That's a good sign. Yeah. That's a good sign. Yeah. That's a good sign. That's the way it should be. You know, but I mean, if, if we don't read, we are not connected with the Holy Spirit. You're right. Yeah, we got to get connected every day. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you know what? I, 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 uh, I listen to the Word all day, every day on the radio. You know, mm -hmm. and then, um, not only that, I when I come home, I put it on the on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's some uh, crazy stuff in there. You know, there's some other books that of the uh, like that book of Enoch, and there's other stuff that man, it, it's crazy how they used to talk about the Bible. You know, Most how, definitely. How the, huh? Most definitely, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I love. I I just love to learn. That's what it is, you know. Yeah, I like learning. Yes. Yeah, because that's, you, you uh, could... that's why the Lord gave us a brain, you know, so that we might think. He says uh, yeah. so because we are we, because we think we speak, you know, and 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 I mean, uh, imagine if we just be followers of uh, everybody else. That's why we're so different than everybody else. Because yeah. the Lord gave us a brain 
and we see what's going on, we see the truth of life, you know, yeah. and we can appreciate a flower, we we can appreciate the sky, we can appreciate the oh mountains God. or the birds. Well, that, you know? That's what happened. It happened to me when I got saved. I was Definitely. in a men's home in Virginia, you know, and, and, and it was a uh, it was a, a big old ranch in Virginia, you know, it was beautiful. And that's the first time I saw my eyes change, you know. Everything mm -hmm. to me looked beautiful. The trees look beautiful. The sky looks beautiful. The owls, there was owls <laughs> there. Everything was beautiful after I got saved, man. You know? <laughs> yeah. You noticed. You noticed that they were there. So black. <laughs> you don't notice it when you're not walking with God, you know? No, we don't. No, no. Nowadays, you know, you it's it's really easy to see where people's heart and eyes are. Most people are not looking up. They don't see the beauty, the beauty of the sky, or the birds, or they don't even know where the moon is in the daytime. Sometimes, you know, I they know. don't see the moon, and uh, many times the moon is out there, you know, early and during the daytime. Yes, they don't it know. Is. Most people don't. Most people don't notice that. Or the yeah. sunrises or the sunsets, you know, most people don't pay attention to that. And it's just, it's just like, like uh, any other thing, any common thing. And those the little things, little details that we appreciate it because exactly. we know that there is a God. You know, the oh, God yeah. created all that, yeah, you know. Oh man, yeah. you know what? You gotta take a trip up north, and you just you should see like around Mount Chasta. It's the little big old mountains up there, you know, and they're full of snow. And I mean, just to, just driving through, just driving through all these wavy turns and stuff, and you see all these lakes and waters and trees and even the redwoods, man. Those big old trees are, you know, you never see stuff stuff like that, you know. And you just wonder how. A lot of wonders, you know, you wonder how that happened and stuff, you know. Right. And it's a creation of God. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And among, and among all that beauty, we also can see the truth of what's going on in the world with the, with the, like in the days of Noah, you know, or the times we're living in like uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah with uh, everything that is going on today oh, yeah. in our society, you know, with yeah. homosexuality and lesbianism and all this uh, uh, Satanism and, uh, I mean, all the perversion, the, the darkness that we are going through and we are light. You know, yeah. that's what we are here for, to be a light. In Have soul. you been in San Francisco? Have you been to San Francisco? No, no, never been there. Never oh been there. My gosh, that's Sin City for there's a lot of uh, gay people there, you know, and they're walking around naked. These guys, you know, mm. it's so sickening to me to see these guys out there, and then they're out there kissing. That even makes it worse, you know. It's and it's all in the streets. You can you can drive down Frisco and 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 you can see these guys kissing right in front of the streets and walking around half naked and stuff and. And they don't have no shame, you know. Mm. You know, God can create stuff like that, you know. Mm. Well, that's uh, the, the the fall of sin. That's yeah. what sin is all about. You, you know, know, I was gonna, yeah, I was going to ask the the Bible. You know, have you ever listened to the Bible answer, man? Not anymore. No, I, yeah. I haven't got the chance. Uh, I used to when I used to drive. Oh, is that right? Hmm. They used to drive a truck or something, big truck. A small truck, a Python truck. Yeah, yeah. A, small, a small truck. Yeah, because I was gonna call up and ask him. You know how God, the devil threw um, one third of the angels down here on Earth. He threw them in Earth down here, right? And I, I haven't found it in the Bible. If there are, I, did they throw down? The devil, the one third of the angels, are they spirits that he threw down in the hair or flesh and blood they, people? No, they're angel spirits. They're spirits. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're angel spirits. They're, they don't have flesh and bone like we do. But they're around us, all right? They're among us. Oh, they've been in Earth here yeah, for 
God knows how long. Yet they're among us. Well, most definitely, that's the spiritual world. That's yeah. what we're fighting against. You know, that's what we're fighting against, principalities and powers in the air. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, and in the book of Revelation, he, you know, all that's going to end. And the devil knows that's it's that's the end of him, you know. In the book of Revelations, you know, it's it is written. He he knows he is gone. You know, he's gonna mm. go to the lake of fire forever. Mm. Yeah, him and, yeah. Him and the his angels, I guess. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. most definitely. Yeah, but there is a lot of sin in the world now. You know. Oh yes. Maybe we didn't notice it when we were growing up, especially me, because I didn't come to, to the Lord until I was like in my mid-30s, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it's just, you know, I wasn't raised uh, going to church. That's what it was. Yes. Mom did. She was a Catholic, a strong Catholic, though. Mm -hmm. But I didn't take after her, you know? Yes. And even when she was dying on her deathbed, I even said, oh, you know, I didn't, I didn't believe in God. And the next day she passed away. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started tripping. I go, you know, there's got to be a God. There's got to be a God now, you know. And then, and then the following year, I lost my wife. And that's what really, um, by, by that time, I was already in my mid-20s. And I had to get away after that because I was doing a lot of drugs and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's um mm -hmm. I don't know. Well most definitely we are not fighting against people, you know, we're fighting against principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Yeah. And uh, the the warfare that we are living in is is against Satan himself and the his uh, minions. You know his 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 angel spirits. It's uh, it's you know we're not fighting against people. All the people that are you know they lost their identity. The homosexuals and lesbians, they just lost their identity. They gave themselves uh, like it says in the book of Romans, God gave them up into a strong delusion, because they start looking at, at each other you know with lust. Yeah. You know, and it's uh, it, I, you know, they're they're choose they chose to do that, but they're all they, they're human beings like everybody else, and they are going to hell. And you know, if we cannot uh, uh, minister to some of them, I mean, there's the in the body of Christ, there's uh, brothers and sisters that minister to this group of. Uh, of people, you know, uh, I haven't got the chance to minister to any homosexual or, or lesbian myself, because I, I, I suppose, you know, that the Lord has uh, sent me mostly to the uh, homeless or the yeah. drug addict or anybody else, but haven't got any chance to minister to any homosexual. Yeah, so, but there are brothers that do. You know, because they are also in bondage, and they need salvation, you know. Yeah. It's just, it's just like us, when we were lost. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I didn't, <laughs> it's just, uh, that, that's, that, that was a, a question, uh, something that really bothered me, because you know how we in the days of Noah, you know the Nephilims, right? Yeah, the I heard of them. Yeah, I heard of them. Were the Watchers? They were supposed to be here to uh, watch over the people in the days of Noah. So mm -hmm. what they did, they saw the women how beautiful they were and stuff. So they started having sexual encounters with these women. Mm -hmm. And they, they impregnated the, the, these women, they, and they had kids. But the Nephilims were really the watchers. They were supposed to watch us, you know, and watch the people back in the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. And they had, the kids that they had from these women were, started eating the people, and, you know. And that's when God said he was sorry that he made, peop he made man, you know. 
So he brought the flood against them. Okay, right. because before Noah, man, there was a lot of stuff going on. Probably yeah, worse yeah. than this. Probably worse than what is going on right now. You know, most definitely, because otherwise the Lord wouldn't have destroyed it. You know, most definitely, uh, he took that decision. It must have been very tough, even though the uh, quantity of people there wasn't as much as we have today, I suppose. But it had, it had to been real bad in order for the Lord to do that decision, you know, to destroy it, everything. Yeah. It must have been real tough. Just Jeez, like, yep. just like mm -hmm. what he did in Sodom and Gomorrah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, he destroyed those cities oh. because, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's amazing. It's amazing that uh, God is such a, uh, mm -hmm. such a, uh, yeah, it, it, it's in the book of Psalms. You can read how powerful God is, you know. Mm -hmm. I read the whole book of Psalms already now. And, um, I know a little bit more because we've been studying it, but it, it's easy when you read it and then you come back and you talk about it, you know, and, and, and it expands more in your mind. So but in the book of Psalms, man, God is very powerful, you know. He's very okay. powerful and and but but he gives us the salvation, you know, the salvation, and he's is like our strong tower, like it says, you know. Yes. So yeah, that we can hide behind him, you know, every time, you know. Yes. Yes, so, the book of Psalms is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, your reference to Satan is Ezekiel 28. <clears throat> Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. Um, 12 through 16. And then you have Isaiah 14. 12 through 17. <laughs> <clears throat> And Isaiah 14 is Lucifer's fall. Lucifer's fall. And, and what happened on Ezekiel? Ezekiel what? Ezekiel, Ezekiel 28. 28. Uh, verse 12. 28. I mean, you can go all the way from... Ezekiel 28, 12 through 26, where it ends. Mm -hmm. 28, what did you say 28, 8, 7? Ezekiel 28, 12. Oh, 28, 12. Uh, so Ezekiel 28, 12 through 26. Those are the verses that you want to look at. Yeah, because I was going to look into it because I was I wanted to talk to the Bible answer man about that, you know, because I thought I thought when the when the angels came down here, those the third of the angels, I thought it was us, you know. I thought we were part of the the the, the third of the angels that got through down in, down here on earth, you know. But like he like my our brother said that, you know, those guys were spirits, you know, they have a spirit, they're around us daily you know so that can't be us no you know? Ephesians 6 12 says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against spiritual wickedness in high places uh, you know but I don't understand first Peter I don't 5, know why God, God threw us here with them you know <laughs> <laughs> Do I mean, fly with them? it's a spirit huh? I mean, yeah, that's, it why, is. that's why in Ephesians it says put on the whole armor of God Exactly, yeah. You have the wiles of the devil, you know. Man, you really want to come out with a sword and a helmet and out and a breastplate, man, when you leave your house sometime, you know? Because there's some guys that really man get to my get to me, man. I have to walk away, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, think about what Moses well Mount well, Moses was challenged here in Psalm Psalm 106. Psalm 106, 32 and 33. <clears throat> and you know, and I titled that I titled Psalm 106, verse 32 and 33, 
with uh, he who he who angers you conquers you. Yeah, that's what yeah, I thought. I <laughs> yeah, they do because then then they just take advantage of you, bro. But look at yeah. Psalm Psalm one hundred six thirty two and thirty three. Go ahead, Adolfo. It says, they en anger him also at the waters of strife, so that he went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake on, on, on visedly with his lips. Oh, gee, he got mad, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But the Bible said it's okay to get mad, but don't sin, you know? No, of course. No, of course. So, yeah. yeah. It's Ephesians, little... Ephesians 4 26, be angry, but sin not. In yeah, other words, exactly. in, other, in other words, be angry, but don't blow it. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly, but I always blow it. <laughs> I blow it and I have to come back down, you know. I have to come back down to reality, man, because I know what I'm fighting against, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what you learn. I mean, you gotta you, you gotta you gotta just keep on those those scriptures, especially like you, you know them, and I don't you don't know where they're at and I don't, but I know I know they're in here, you know, but I I cannot memorize them because I what I do, I just read and read and read and read and read, but I don't memorize scriptures, you know. But I know, the, the, I know, I know, I, you talk to me about a certain subject and I know where it's at. And I don't know where it's at, but I can, I can tell you what happened. You know, mm -hmm. I can tell you yeah, what happened. Was, you know, just uh, brother Earl, just keep in mind that Satan is out there. So the very moment that you're going to get up, he's going to right there, try to put trouble for you, cause trouble for you. And he's gonna be doing the use. He's gonna be using people against you to make you angry because he knows what ticks you. He knows what yeah. makes you angry. So he's gonna use someone. He's gonna touch and speak in the ear of someone to do something to you. But it's not the person. It's the enemy using this person, blowing something in his ear to say to his his. Uh, uh, conscious or whatever conscious you know do something you know and and then to provoke you but if you yeah. get up with the idea in your brain that you have an enemy and that he's kind of he's out there to get you you're going to be aware every moment and you're going to see those little details and you're going to you can say within yourself you devil you get out of here within your mind you know within your brain i see you i see you what you're doing you know no i yeah because i every morning man i read my bible and I, and I wake up walking around like mickey mouse whistling you know and then just until something you know triggers my ear or something or somebody tickles my ear the wrong way or something you know and there it's on you know of course <laughs> but okay. i do get up like making you know get up here whistling in the morning and stuff you know after i read the bible i feel strong More i feel strong in the morning you know? yeah of course just keep in mind when that you, you have an enemy yeah yeah it's when you go out into the world and things change you know yeah yeah, you so, you get out of you 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 save zone and go to war. Exactly, man. That's what I gotta start doing again, man. I got, but I used to do it, man. But I used to still get mad when I first turned Christian. I was pretty strong into the word. I used to, I used to go to the jails. I used to go to the parks. I used to go everywhere, you know, uh, sharing the word of God. You know, when I first got saved, and I had a partner. My homeboy, he's the one who brought me to the Lord and uh, he passed away already, but yeah, me and him, we used to go do battle in the parks and we didn't care. We were bold, you know, talk, telling people about God, you know. Hey, what's, we, we stopping you? Huh? what's stopping you right now to do that? To go back Maybe to do that? Maybe. No, because you need a partner. You can't just be go out there alone, you know. You need a like a group, or at least two, three people because these people will attack you and start telling you, I'll oh, get out of here and this and that. But now, you know, not and me and him, we were both. We would just talk bad about, we would 
start throwing scriptures at them and stuff like that, you know. And we were just hardcore, you know, uh, Christians when we first got saved, though, you know. I, I guess everybody's like that. When they first get saved, they're out in the everywhere. They want to share the word of God, you know. Mm. But yeah, you know, I used to we used to go to all the parks where all the Chicanos hang, hung around and all the lowriders everywhere. We used to go everywhere just to share the word the, the word of God. You know, we didn't care where we were, you know. Maybe the Lord wants you to come back. Well, uh, yeah, I want to. I would like to do back, get back into my ministry. I had, I had a, a lowrider magazine, and I'll give you a copy of it. I, well, there was like about ten copies I made, because it, it would come out every three months, you know. Yeah, uh -huh. that's awesome. That's and, cool. uh, yeah, and it, and it was. If you ever saw the lowrider magazine back in the days, my magazine was like that. It had a lot of. We would we would go to all the Christian car shows. People they would call us. Hey, we're having a car show. You know, all the churches. Hey, we're having a festival. Can you come? Uh, can you come over here and take pictures and do a story on our festival? You know, we would do stuff like that. Mm. I'll give you. I'll give you some copies of the magazine. I, I, I still have some. You know, that'll be cool. By any chance, you know, spin. And I would like to start that, huh? By any chance, you know, spin. Spin. A guy named Spin. No. You don't know him, okay? Yeah. Yeah, he's a Christian too. He was he was used to be a biker. Oh, I know a lot of bikers. I know a lot yeah. of Christian bikers. Mm -hmm. He used to go to red wine, huh? Or new wine, know. I mean. It's, yeah. I, so he's he's been been he was he's all over the place. Because that, that pastor, he he's uh he's one of those uh motorcycle gang guys, you know? He's a mm -hmm. pastor now. It's right here. He's right here on Brookers in um, 91. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know I know a lot of pastors in ministry because of the magazine, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was me and these two other girls, and we would just go out. I'd send them out to festivals, and they would cover one or two festivals a day, you know? And I would cover some, too. I would even, I mean, I even interviewed some Mexican mafia top, I mean, big top guys, you know, top guys from the Mexican mafia. I did stories on them. I used to do biographies on people. That's what I did. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I'll give you some magazines, you know, so you can see what I, the, the ministry I, that I used to do. But I really want to get back into doing that, really, you know. I will mm -hmm. pretty soon because I'm going to be in my life where I'm going to try to make a little bit more money, you know. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm getting old, I, uh, I'm never going to stop working, you know. I love mm. going to work every day. I don't like staying home. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I go to work every day. I love though. I love working. I just love going over there and do my job and stuff, you know. That's right. Uh, That's but right now we just, you know, we gotta keep our eye on that's good that we started this Bible study. I mean, you guys been together for a while. I'm mean, this is my first time, you know. Yes, the Bible indeed, and, and uh, it's an honor yeah, for me to it's an honor for me to meet you. It's very nice meeting you. It's very very yeah, good because, meeting. You. Very, yeah, very I, good. I, needed, I needed to go to. I was looking for a Bible study. You know, hmm. I, I'm gonna go look for one down here down the street to call the Vineyard. You know, I heard there's a lot of people that I know there that go there. Yes, but I'm just gonna stick with my church. But you know. It's just that I need to be in a Bible study. That's what I yeah. do. Because I used to do Bible studies, you know, myself. Mm. You know what You know what we used to do at our church? We used to have cell groups, right? And, and there was 12 of us. And we all had, we started cell groups. And once you got 12 people, you leave somebody in charge and you go start another 12, you know? And you, you, you do the 12, and then you start another 12. And that's the way our church got so big. It was the biggest Hispanic church in the, in the United States, Temple oh. Calvario. <laughs> so that's a, but that's the way they they would minister. That's the way they would minister to people. If wow. if you go to a let's say you go to a house, somebody opens the door for you to start a Bible study, and you and you and you raise twelve disciples, and you step out and leave someone in charge. You can go start another home. You know. 
Right. That was, that was fun too, man. I, we did a lot of ministry, you know, at, at our church. Mm -hmm. So, but that, you know, I miss all that, but it's sometimes God has put you somewhere else, you know? Yes, of course. Like, like this, like this Bible study. I like it, you know? Mm -hmm. So but I like it too. I've been here for a while. Uh, yeah. Eight months, maybe eight or nine months. Possibly. Eight months, hijo. It's <laughs> a long time, eight months. Well, that's, that's good. Everybody else has been there here longer than, than me. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Right, Pastor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can. People come and go. Yeah. He can, I he was can... the baby. Now you're the baby. Yeah, I'm the baby now. <laughs> I don't mind, man. You know, I like to I like to share myself too, you know. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. What happens, you encourage other people, you know, they, they might be going through the same thing too, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. I you know, I I just like doing all this. But yeah, you know what? Let's uh, let's get together again because I gotta get going, man. I gotta get some sleep. It's already gonna be 12. Yes, indeed. Yes, it's I nice to uh, meet you. Uh, brother Ro. Yeah, yeah. and let me know all these brothers here, you know. There's one yeah. that's trying to connect with the audio. No, hey, but we meet uh, once a month. <clears throat> Only once a month? We meet we meet once a month to, for communion. <clears throat> oh, you do? Yeah, right yeah. there. So I'll keep you posted Where? on that. At your shop? No, around the corner at a restaurant. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me know, man. Keep me posted, man. Well, when is the next posted. Bible study? Uh, next Thursday. <laughs> next Thursday. So it's every Thursday? Every Thursday. All right. Okay. No, I'll be here, bro. All right, everyone. I'll be here, man. All right, bro. Nice meeting everybody, man. Hey, man. God bless you. Bless you. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Good night, bro. All right. Good God bless you. God bless. All right. God bless you, too. Hey, how do you turn the music? Yeah, the este, te este. Big ready, can you? Can, he's trying to connect. He can't connect. <laughs> Big Randy, what's going on with Big Randy and technology? No puede conectar. He's trying to connect. He can't connect. Uh, but I, I got more scriptures, but I think we'll end it. Mm -hmm. Re read them. You don't. You don't want. You don't want to keep going. Oh, let me get him out, brother. Yeah, amen. <laughs> let me get him. Or can you tell them to me the scriptures? No, the other scripture we have is uh, Exodus thirty-three. The reading is uh, Exodus. Exodus. Just take the whole chapter. Is uh, thirty-three. Verse 14 is one of the key verses. So it's a whole chapter. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, verse verse 14 is one of the key verses. Okay, so verse 14. Verse 14 is a key verse. Verse. Is it so it's just Exodus 33? Um whole chapter? What the key uh, yeah, because we're because there's two passages in the Bible. Okay. Uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament is Matthew 11. All right. Uh, verse 28. Verse 28. And these are the, um, you know, when, when Moses was challenged here in, in, Moses, in Exodus 33. Moses, Moses was challenged. Yeah, leading the Israelites through the wilderness. <clears throat> yeah. Leading the Israelites through the wilderness? Yep. And the Israelites were the ones that turned on God, right? That, that, was, that was God's covenant? Uh, yeah, they're the ones that kind of like Sinned against they the Lord. Walked away, walked away with, with Satan? No, they didn't walk with Satan, but they turned to idols and then they came back and 
And right here in Exodus 33 is when Moses interceded for his people. Okay. But, you know, the Lord was sending him, sending them. And Moses said, Lord, you know. And the Lord replied in verse 14, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Amen. Well, say that again one more time. Uh, verse 14 of Exodus 33, it says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. My presence, my my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Will go with you, and I will give you rest. And, and then you have Matthew eleven twenty eight. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, "Come, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened." And I will give you rest. What was it Matthew 28 or what was it? Matthew 11. Chapter 11. Matthew 11. Verse 28. Uh -huh. Verse 28. The reason why I'm giving you those scriptures is because here in Psalm 62, verse 1 says, My soul silently waits for, for you, God. For from him comes my salvation. You know, so what does it mean? What what it what does it uh, mean to wait? To wait in silence. To wait in silence is to expect. It's to reflect. It's to observe. And it's to rest. To expect. It's yeah. To wait. To wait in silence. Is to expect. Uh huh. To reflect. Reflect. To observe and to observe and to watch observe. and to and to rest to watch and to rest. Right. It also means to submit. <laughs> oh, I mean, submit. Always submit. Submitting yourself is basically, most people would think that's failure, but at the same point, you don't fail under Jesus' as form of watch. He just physically wants you to be humble. And that's what submitting yourself causes the, is the marking of humbleness, right? Right. Humility. Yeah, humility, self-humility. Self you know, the Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. So to wait in silence is to submit to God's will. And what the psalmist is doing, he's submitting to God's will here. To God's will. As he waits in silence. Waiting in silence. And right here in verse 5, <clears throat> Of Psalm 62, it says, My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. You know, when He says, My soul, Psalms what 52? Uh, Psalm 62, uh -huh. verse 5. You know, when He says, My soul waits silently for God alone, He's speaking to Himself. Okay. And speaking to his soul to wait to wait silently for God. You know, and what's your will? I mean, what's your what's your soul? Your soul is your is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Yes, sir. So he's speaking to his mind, he's speaking to his will, and he's speaking to his to his emotions to wait silently on the Lord. Right? Uh-huh. And like I wrote my introduction, like I, like I wrote my introduction, it says that um, um, right? Verse one, wait for God alone, my confident trust. Let me see here. They says that uh, here. Let me see. 
uh, verse six, right? It says he, he, well, verse five, it says, my soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. And then verse six says, he, he only is my rock. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Right? Well. But note here that it does not say my hope is in him. No, it says my hope is from him. My hope. It, it doesn't say my hope is my hope is in him. It's it, says, from him. it says my hope is from him. It's from him. My hope is from him. From him. What does that mean? That means that even, even hope is a gift of God. Yes. Right? Amen. Even even hope is a gift from God. Why? Because it because it says my hope is from him. Right? He doesn't say my hope is in him. It says my hope is from him. Meaning that Amen. The meaning 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 that even hope is a gift of God. And we know when it says that, uh, when it says my soul, when it says he only is my rock and my salvation. You know, when it says my, my rock, my salvation. Uh -huh. um, it's like he's saying to your sister, what did, what did my dad say? Or what did my mom say? Amen. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So he's he's what he's saying is that, you know, when you say what what did my mom say, that means you have a personal relationship with your mom. You have a personal relationship with your dad. You know, you don't really say what what did our dad say or what did our mom say. Mm -hmm. No, you say what did my mom say, and what did my dad say? Even though you're talking to your sister <laughs> or your or your brother. <laughs> You know, what, what does that mean here? It, you know, when David says, my hope is in him, right? My hope is from him. He says, my hope is from him. And he is my rock and my, and my salvation. You know, what he's saying by my, what he means by my is it means that, that he had a personal relationship with God. You know, like when you, when you say my dad, that means you have a relationship with your dad. When you say my mom, it means you have a relationship with your mom. I mean, you know her, you trust her. Amen. That's what we learn here. When David says, "My he is, he is my rock, my salvation. My hope is from him. Meaning that he has a personal relationship with his creator, with his God. Amen. And that gives him hope. And, you know, as he waits silently, so he when he's waiting silently, he's expecting, he is reflecting, and he is observing, and he is resting, and he is submitting. Submitting to God's will. Expecting salvation and deliverance. Amen. Right? He is my God, my rock, my fortress, my hope. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You want to pray us out? Me? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yes, amen. All right, bro. Um, as we bow our heads, we come to you, Jesus, in um in in prayers and open hands and in also in silence, awaiting upon your answers and forgiveness upon any 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 physical form of um of sinning itself that we might not know of. Yeah, the graces of your of your presence within our within our um our healing and our and our relationship with you is physically embracing we thank you lord for everything we thank you for this bible study and, and um thank you for the journey that physically has been been coming forth and i know i haven't been around too much but i was around when it first was starting and i thank you lord for for um for robert he's come a long ways pastor robert and junior um he's come a very long ways in his in his form of teaching and every every week it gets better and better and i thank you lord for that and just giving me strength to um, be able to make it to these meetings 
is also building the relationship between me and you, Lord, and that's what I want to do for it. As everyone else else also also wants, please for, please bless us, Lord, and give us the the willing grace of of sleep and resting, so we wake up rested the next tomorrow, and in graces of of your name, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna write that down. Appreciate you, brother. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Hey, it's, it's been a long journey, Junior. Like it's been on like a lot of basically. From when you first started and until and now, I've been realizing that like is you've gotten like really you got him real professional with it. <laughs> well, that's that's all the Lord, bro. It's not Amen. Me. <laughs> you know, like I say, you know, you know, to him be all the glory. Yeah. You know. And it's not what we do for God, but rather because of God, you know, because of what God has done in my life, because what God has done in your life. And but because of what God is doing in our lives right now, presently, you know, Amen. You know, He's our deliverer, He's our rock, He's our fortress. You know, like you just prayed right now, you know, yes, sir. <laughs> to wait, He's our rock, He's our fortress. You know, is to wait and expectantly for Him to move on our behalf. Hey, big ready. Good night, bro. Buenas noches. Sorry you couldn't log in. <laughs> He's listening, but he can't log in. Amen. At least he's there, right? <laughs> God bless you, brother. Good night. God bless you. All right, Canal. We'll All right, Canal. Well, um, well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, my brother. All right, thank pressure. you for coming on. Thank you for coming on. Oh, no, thank you. Much love. Okay, love. Amen. God bless. Okay, God bless.